So I'm here with Gary Johnson, who's running for the Republican nomination uh, for the president in 2012. And you are a former governor of New Mexico. Um, can you tell the viewers a little bit about what you did as governor of New Mexico? Well, I, I think first and foremost, uh, I was really good uh, at uh, the stewardship of tax dollars. I was a penny-pinching governor. I vetoed 750 bills while I was governor of New Mexico. I left New Mexico with a billion dollar plus uh, surplus and back to the vetoes. Uh, only two were overridden, so it made a difference when it came to billions of dollars worth of spending. It made a difference when it came to government telling you and I what we could or couldn't do in the bedroom. Yeah, it's a broad public field. Just government not telling you what to do in the bedroom. That's not typically something you hear a lot of people from the public um, what, how, how do you differentiate yourself between the other small candidates? I guess that's well, what I, I, I am different when it comes to believing that Republicans are first and foremost uh, about pocketbook issues, and that's why I'm a Republican. Uh, when it comes to the social agenda, I really believe that government should empower you and I to make decisions that only affect our lives and that we're best suited to make those decisions, not the government. So I think I, I think I differentiate myself from what would be described by the rest of the world as a Republican narrowly focused social agenda. I do not have a social agenda. My agenda has to do with dollars and cents. And when it comes to agendas, I want to empower all of us to make the decisions that I think only you and I have the ability to make. I would love to see the Republican Party as the party of choice. The Republicans would always come down on empowering the individual to make the choices that only an individual can determine. Well, the choice for the individual is something that I don't want to get ready to do. Um, but you mentioned dollars and cents issues. So to kind of back up and look at the macro picture, obviously on the, on the national stage, Run for president, so that's what's important here. On a national stage, the government finances are not in great shape. Many states have their own problems. But how do you want to address the budget crisis that's going on as we speak, the debt crisis basically that's going on in Washington, D.C.? How would you get us back on track? So we need to stop printing money. We need to we need to balance the federal budget. I would not currently vote for an increase. In the, uh, in, in the debt limit, uh, I would veto that legislation. I think we need to force not printing money. And for all the calamity that will go along with forcing that issue, I just suggest it will never be easier to do it than now, as opposed to oh, yeah, any distance down in the future. We have control of the situation now. A bond market collapse may present itself as being something out of control, and I just suggest that that's in the cards. It's going to happen unless we actually balance the federal budget. And then when it comes to jobs, uh, I say enact the fair tax, fairtax.org, for those that haven't looked at this. But eliminate business to business tax, so eliminate the corporate income tax, eliminate the income tax for you and I, and implement a one-time consumption tax that takes the place of all other federal tax. So we're also talking about abolishing the IRS too. And I think as you mentioned earlier, there was a uh, mechanism built in there where I think it was a pre-made call for that would offset the burden of the tax for people up to the poverty line. It, so a lot of people are concerned yes. about sales taxes yes. being regressive and then so, so every everybody gets everybody in the country gets covered up, uh, gets covered uh, to the poverty level, and it would uh, be fair, and it would also uh, stimulate savings. Your position on the rack, I know, was a lot different than many other Republicans because you proposed that from the beginning. What do you propose to do today about the wars in Afghanistan and Iraq? Uh, that we get out tomorrow. Uh, I was opposed to Iraq from the start. Uh, I thought that there was, I, I never thought there was a military threat from Iraq. And if there would have been, if there would have been weapons of mass destruction, I thought we could have, if we have the military surveillance capability to see that happening, 
and that if it would have happened, we could have gone in and dealt with it. I thought that if we went into Iraq, we would find ourselves in a civil war to which there would be no end. Afghanistan, initially, I thought that was totally warranted. We were attacked, we attacked back, but after being in uh, Afghanistan for six months, we effectively wiped out Al-Qaeda. That was 10 years ago. We're building roads, schools, bridges, highways, and hospitals in Iraq and Afghanistan and other places in the world. Don't we have those same needs here? And we're bankrupt, we're borrowing 43 cents, printing 43 cents out of every dollar that we're spending. That's crazy. Libya, where in the United States Constitution does it say that because we don't like a foreign dictator, we should go in and topple the foreign dictator? I don't, I don't think it's in there. I also didn't see where it said that the president gets to decide to do that. Without the, no, no Congress. congressional authorization. Haven't we injected ourselves into a civil war in Libya? Don't five other countries in the Middle East right now qualify for that same intervention? Is there no end to our military involvement in other countries? Can we, I advocate cutting military spending by 43%. Uh, can we provide a strong national defense for this country and cut military spending by 43%? I think the operative word here is defense. And yes, we can. We can't afford offense, and we can't afford to nation build. Let's dry that up. And so you kind of touched on some of the major points of what you do if you're in office. Uh, just to wrap up, what's your strategy going forward in the campaign? particularly in the interest of large nations over there. You said you're focusing on the country, so what can voters expect from you? Just, just, you just that I'm going to be around. No, I'm going to be around. I'm going to be in New Hampshire every couple of weeks uh, for several days, every couple of weeks, uh, talking to as many groups as I possibly can and uh, putting my chips on the table here in New Hampshire. It's a great political environment here in this state where people really, this is my observation, People really do go out of their way to hear what a candidate has to say and uh, to cuss and discuss it. Yeah, thank you. Thank you.